What is going on, Flyers Nation? It's your boy, Ed Barcelo, Philly, United of All Things Sports and Culture, here in the beautiful city of Philadelphia. Today, we are going to preview the Philadelphia Flyers as they are also returning back to play. We are slowly getting back to everything big, getting back to normal in the city of Philadelphia as far as our Philly sports goes. We won't give any side eyes to the Philadelphia Phillies at the MLB podcast uh before we get started guys do not forget to hit the like button subscribe to this channel hit the bell button for notifications as well as sharing this video and this channel to help your boy grow and don't forget to check out philly sports network for all your philly sports needs i will leave a link in the description below so you guys can check out psn and guys look when it comes to the philadelphia flyers look before the shutdown they were the hottest team not only in philadelphia but in, in the National Hockey League, they, the nine-game winning streak was so much fun to go through. They they were playing at another level, something we have really, I don't think we've ever seen with the Flyers since maybe 2010, if we could say that. Um, so it, 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 with going back to play, my, really the only question I have for this Flyers team is, can they still play like that hot team that we saw before the shutdown? Like They were clicking on all cylinders. Uh, they were fast, physical, scoring at will, and they were playing some good teams. And they they put the Eastern Conference on notice, like letting them know, like, hey, we are for real this year, and we are not going to be taken lightly at all. And a lot of the 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 success the Flyers have had this season has to do with Ali Vigneau. Vigneau has come in and truly changed the culture, truly instilled a, a sort of a, 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 a of a style of play for the Philadelphia Flyers, and. He, to me, is the main reason why they are where they're at. Because there's still a lot of pieces from last season. Uh, Kevin Hayes really is the main difference in a couple other trading uh, trade deadline pieces. But this is still the same team. And Ali Mignot has just been getting the best out of this team here. So I really, truly believe the main question has to be whether or not this team can stay, stay at the same consistency that they were at uh, before the shutdown happened. So... When we're looking at this Flyers team, um, it, it's a combination of veteran players who have been with this team for a while and some youngsters who are promising and are really, really, really exciting. Uh, when it comes to the Lions, the, it's a big question mark. And really the main question mark is um, where's Scott Law and, and where's Joel Farabee going to go? Because I think the first line is set in stone. Like I, I, That line really has not been changed at all throughout the season. Claude Giroux. Um, Sean Couturier and Jakob Voracek, that is set in stone, lock that in, that's going to be happening. Um, the second line is where it gets interesting. I think Kevin Hayes definitely has played himself as that as the second best center on this team, and he will be the starting center for the second line. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Travis Konechny, who has been probably the best player for the Flyers this season, honestly, other than, of course, uh, Carter Hart, who we will get to in one second. But uh, Kevin Hayes, uh, Travis Konechny, Really, at the left is where the question mark is. Do you go with Joe Faraby, uh, who is a young one of one of our younger players, who is still has a lot of promise and has been playing really well? Has you know anything Vigneault has asked him, he has done. Can he play as on that second line? Personally, me, I think you need to go with Scott Law, and even though that Law and is still really good at the center position, but you guys cannot forget that what. Kevin Hayes and, and and Scott Lawton had before the shutdown was truly special. Those guys had chemistry going. They were feeding off of each other. And I think that matching those two with the talent of Travis Konechny is super dangerous as your second line coming off on the ice. So I think that that's personally where I think this team needs to go. Uh, the third line, I think it's uh, JVR, uh, who I think that's perfect for him. He's obviously still talented. Injuries has been an issue, of course. But him at that third line really would be good to see. Uh, Derek Grant and then uh, Tyler Pitlick. I think that will be the uh, the starting third line there. I think that's still pretty good. It's pretty serviceable. A lot of veteran leadership. And they should be able to get some goals. And they should be able to get the job done um, defensively as well. The fourth line, um, I think that it will be Michael Raffle, Nate Thompson, and Joel Farabee as that fourth line there. Joel matching up with two veteran guys like uh, a, a Derek, a Nate Thompson, I'm sorry, and a Michael Raffle. I think that would be really good to see there for them. And then, of course, defensively is really where it gets interesting with the Flyers. Of course, the, the top defensive line is still status quo, guys. Um, Ivan Provorov and Matt Niskanen, that to me was such a fun uh, lineup there for the for the D-line. 
Uh, Von Provorov, to me, has truly cemented himself as the best defender on this Philadelphia Flyers team. Matching that with Matt Niskanen, who brings the better leadership, of course. And Matt, I, I was curious how he would play and how he would fare with this Philadelphia Flyers squad. Uh, obviously, he's he's had oh, he's got a winning pedigree, winning with the Capitals, winning with the Penguins, um, bringing some of that veteran leadership was going to be crucial. But not only has he been bringing veteran leadership and another voice in the locker room, but he's pretty playing pretty well too. Uh, next line: Travis Sanheim and Philip Myers. Philip Myers has been a surprise this season, and uh, that that should be a status quo. Third line: Robert Haig. Shouts out to Pot Street Bullies. We are the. I am a, a proud member of the Haig Hive. Uh, Rock, can't wait to see what Robert Haig has in store. And uh, jo Justin Braun, the veteran guy out there as well. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what Shane, if Shane Goss, which if I'm sure Shane Gosper will see some ice time, but we'll be interested to see what he has. A lot of question marks for Mr. Gosper. I'm really rooting for the guy. I think that, I think that he's just, it's just been a rough couple years for him. And, and uh, he obviously came off, came on really hot with the Flyers, but that will be the main question mark for me. As far as the D, the defensive pairings go, um, and oh, how can I forget? We have to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have to take a second. And Oscar Lindblom, Lindblom, is in Toronto right now with the Flyers. Like that is crazy. Like, like literally, it was eight months ago. He was going through chemo. He was he was going through cancer, uh, the leukemia, and he is in Toronto with the team. Uh, I hope this hope he gets some ice time. I don't know how wh how he can help us obviously i don't know how well how good in shape he is but he's there and that's definitely a good story to see we are oscar strong here and it, i'm so happy to see him there but let's move on to the goalies guys so obviously carter hart <clears throat> the question was can carter hart be that everyday starting goal goalkeeper for the philadelphia flyers and guys he answered that question this season he is our goalie going forward Absolutely spectacular season by him. He's made some serious strides, and the future is super bright for him. And this is going to be his first taste of playoffs. I'm interested to see how he's going to fare in his first taste of NHL uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. And then the we have the we have a great uh, changeup. Brian Elliott being that second goalkeeper there. The Moose is more than capable of handling the duties as the backup. He's going to see some us uh, some ice time as well in this tournament. Um, I'm really excited for the goal. I think the, we're we're finally like it's crazy. I don't, I don't remember the last time we've really been set at the goalkeeper position, but we are set at the goalkeeper position. Um, I think that this Flyers team is it. I think that they're going to continue where they left off. Now, it, it, the Pittsburgh Penguins game, this, this the scrimmage to get ready for the, this tournament. Um, I, I know it's a scrimmage, but they look good. They they look like they did not lose a step. Um. I really was liking the lines too. The Scott Long game winner was absolutely filth, absolutely filthy. So that's going to be interesting to see. So the Flyers obviously are going to open up against the Boston Bruins in the first game. Um, I, that's that'll be the the tail the test for sure to see where we're really at as a team. Um, the Boston Bruins really gave us fits throughout the season. They even ended our nine game winning streak that we had as well. So this is this round robin that we're going to go up against is not going to be easy. The next game is going to be the Washington Capitals, but we took care of them throughout the season. And then the last game is going to be against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I that Boston game, 50-50, either way for me, I really don't know what is going to happen that game. I, I really want to say we're going to win. Um, but I, 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 you know what? I'll go. I'll go with the win. I think we'll win that first game. I think we'll beat the Capitals. The Lightning is a team I don't want to face in this in this playoffs. They really, there's the, they are the most physical team at least in the Eastern Conference. And I don't know if we can match the the physicality. It's crazy. Like we kind of got rid of like that Broad Street Bullies mentality. We we're a little bit more of a finesse uh, squad, but. You know this Tampa Bay Lightning team really has a. They're obviously they're skillful, but now they're a physical ass team. So it's going to be tough to match up against that in a seven game series. So I don't know how that's going to go. But uh, the other, so the I want to just go over the other matchups because you know we have to watch all of them because we could play any one of these teams. So the so we have the fifth seed Pittsburgh Penguins facing off against the Montreal Canadiens, the sixth seed Carolina Hurricanes facing off against the eleven seed New York Rangers. The seven seed New York Islanders facing off against the ten seed Florida Panthers, and the eight seed Toronto Maple Leafs are facing off against the ninth seed Columbus Blue Jackets. So, um, right off the bat, I, I, obviously, you know I don't want to face off against Pittsburgh right away. 
Um, and I think that um, maybe Montreal could be one of those sneaky teams if they find a way to beat Pittsburgh. Uh, Carolina, you know, they, they obviously remember the playoff run they went on last season, just losing in the Eastern Conference Finals. And the Islanders are also a tough team. So um, that's going to be tough to see. I think that the Flyers can find a way to get that third seed. I really think that they, that's where they will finish here. Um, and then more than likely, you know, they will face off against the winner of the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers. I really hope we play the Rangers. You know me. I always want to beat up on a New York team. So uh, that, that would be really interesting to see. And also, guys, we have to commend the NHL. They've really, I think that, you know, obviously the MLS has done a great job. NBA is in the process right now. The, the games, uh, NBA season just started today. So they're doing really well, too. But I think the NHL really knocked it out the park. The ability of being able to play their games up in Canada, where obviously Canada has handled the coronavirus way better than we have here in the United States. Really smart there. And also, this format is fantastic. Like, the, the four top uh, place teams have to play against each other to, it's kind of to reseed, right? The round robins, it's, that's a great idea. And then the qualifying rounds, getting the, the fifth to 12th place teams to play off against each other, to play into the playoffs. This is the best format out of all the sports thus far. Um, and most importantly, the safety is crucial to playing in Canada. And the thing is that the Eastern Conference teams are in Toronto. The Western Conference teams are in Alberta. This is absolutely the best possible way for the Flyers uh, and the NHL to get back to play. Again, I think the Flyers finished in third. Uh, I really like our chances in the, in this tournament simply because you got you got your coach, right? You got Ali Mignot, who's actually been to two NHL uh, Stanley Cup finals with two different teams, the Vancouver uh, Canucks and the New York Rangers. He, we have veteran players like Claude Giroux, Jakob Voracek, JVR, Sean Couturier, and youngsters like Travis Konechny, um, uh, Joel Farabee, and, and guys like that. Who, and I'm sorry, Yvonne Provorov. Was, I can forget Yvonne Provorov. Philip Myers. Um, and then you got the goalie. You got Carter Hart, who who is uh, going into this as his first time in the playoffs. Great first test. Can he continue the form that he has shown us through up until this point? And if that, that's not the case, you got the backup and Brian Elliott. This team has got depth. This team has got everything that you need in a championship caliber team. It's up to them. How bad do they want this? This is uh, this, this is up. The, the, it, it's for it's up for the grabs. It's up for grabbings here. So. We will see what happens for, with the Philadelphia Flyers. I'm really excited, guys. But let me know, guys, how you feel in the comments below. Tell me how you guys feel about the Flyers going into this restart um, in the NHL. And uh, look, give me your X Factor. Who's the X Factor for the Flyers going into this tournament? Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't Again, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell button for notifications as well as sharing this video and this channel to help this young parcero grow. Don't forget to check out Philly Sports Network as well. I will leave that link in the description below so you guys can check that out. Again, I go by the name of Ed Parcero Philly, and I'm telling you guys, anytime, anywhere.